So what's that one major problem with budget flagships? If you ask me, it's that they focus primarily on the raw performance by packing some of the best flagship hardware, but there often isn't much inside to take advantage of all that raw power. But it's 2022 and it's time to demand more for the buck. What I have here are the three of the latest high-end smartphone launches. That is the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, the OnePlus 9 RT, and the Xiaomi 11T Pro. And I'm going to be doing in this video a all-out three-way comparison to see if any of these three phones are worth the shot. But before we begin, let's take a quick look at the specs of the three smartphones. Let's quickly get the specs out of the way. The table shows the key specs of the three phones and straight off, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE and the Xiaomi 11T Pro stands out. The 11T Pro runs on the Snapdragon 888, sports a Dolby Vision display with Dolby Atmos speakers, 120W fast charging, 120Hz refresh rate and a 5000mAh battery just for Rs 39999. On the other hand, Samsung Galaxy S21 FE comes with the same Exynos 2100 SoC found in the S21 series with an LTPO 120Hz display, IP68 protection, wireless charging for a whooping 54,999. And sitting in the middle is the OnePlus 9RT with the Snapdragon 888 120Hz flat display, 65W charging starting from Rs 42999. Just a look at the spec sheet will tell you all three smartphones are worth considering. But the Xiaomi 11T Pro looks to be the most enticing with a high price to performance ratio followed by OnePlus 9 RT and then the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. Now in our due course of testing, there emerged two clear winners across multiple parameters including charging, display, battery life, the camera, performance. So which are these two? Watch till the end to find out. Hi, I'm Shubhrajit, you're watching My Smart Price. Let's get this three-way battle started. Starting off with the design, all three comes in distinct sizes and finishes. The Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is the most compact, almost Pixel 4a sized with a comfortable grip and a design aesthetic in line with the Galaxy S21 series. Like the Galaxy S21, it also uses a glass-stick material with matte finish for the rear panel that also facilitates wireless charging. It kind of makes it feel cheap for a phone priced above 50k, but there are practical advantages. There's no smudges or fingerprints and it doesn't get too hot. It's slightly taller than the S21 with a larger display and a bigger battery. It's also the most reassuring of the three with IP68 ingress protection and Gorilla Glass Victus on top. The OnePlus 9 RT is actually the most stylish in my opinion. It's slim and easy to hold and the black colorway I received has these shimmery glittery particles in it and it looks sexy AF. No ingress protection here though, but you do get Gorilla Glass 5 on both sides, a metal frame and a flat display. Like always, there's the alert slider and it has the camera module design of the OnePlus Nord 2. The Xiaomi 11T Pro is the flashiest of the three. It comes in this celestial magic variant that flourishes in all these many colors as the light strikes against it. It feels smooth to touch with a frosted anti-glare finish but is the thickest and heaviest of the three. The 11T Pro has a plastic frame, Gorilla Glass Victus on the display and an IP53 protection which is basically splash resistance. This one does attract a few smudges and fingerprints upon using and among the three, this one feels the most like a budget flagship. It's only ironic that upon use, the 11T Pro suddenly feels like a premium flagship out of the three. The reason is the display. The 11T Pro undercuts all its rivals, some more expensive than itself, with a 10-bit AMOLED display that's also Dolby Vision certified. The 6.67-inch flat panel has won 14 DisplayMate A Plus awards, indicating how good it spits out colors. A 10-bit panel allows for a billion colors to be visible on the display. In other words, if the content you're watching is mastered in HDR or Dolby Vision using the DCI-P3 color space, the display will be able to output it exactly the way it was mastered. No other smartphone in this price range can deliver as much. But 10-bit displays are common in iPhones and Galaxy X flagships, so it's quite surprising to find it in a 40K smartphone. In comparison, both the Galaxy S21 FE and the OnePlus 9 RT's display look bland. OnePlus has the same Full HD Plus 120Hz AMOLED display over from the OnePlus 9R, 
But if the Xiaomi 11T Pro is geared towards content consumption, the 9RT's peak 600 Hz touch response rate will delight gamers. The company advertises a touch latency of just 29 milliseconds that's only just a few milliseconds slower than the ROG Phone 5. The Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, on the other hand, gets the same dynamic AMOLED 2X display from the Galaxy S21 sans the 1300 nits peak brightness. Out of the three, the Galaxy S21 FE has the most power-efficient display. Firstly, it's much smaller than the other two. And secondly, this one's an LTPO display that can adjust the refresh rate from 10 Hz to 120 Hz based on what's playing on the screen. Adaptive refresh rate is also present on the other two, but they don't variate the refresh rate between too many values. Frankly, the 11T Pro has the most stunning display, not just among the three we're testing, but also amidst every other offering in this range. It's a treat to watch movies mastered on Dolby Vision on this display, especially with the dual studio speakers tuned by Harman Kardon with Dolby Atmos support. In fact, this is the only smartphone that has both a Dolby Vision display and Dolby Atmos audio. The audio output on the other two is also quite decent. Dolby Atmos is present in OnePlus 9 RT as well, but it lags the high-res certification or the Type-C to 3.5mm dongle that comes in the Xiaomi 11T Pro's box. While the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE just about manages to output a loud volume with some amount of channel separation. So while Samsung and OnePlus spent a lot of their resources in perfecting the design of the two phones, Xiaomi instead chose to focus on the display and audio and that gives it a clear edge over the two so far. Now, all three phones are flagship grade, at least in terms of the hardware they pack inside. Both the 11T Pro and the 9RT run on the Snapdragon 888, while the Galaxy S21 FE has the Exynos 2100. The two chipsets have a lot in common, but it has been noticed throughout the past year that the Snapdragon 888 has had better power efficiency, but the performance delta between the two have never been smaller. Let's see how that plays out in the benchmark scores of the three phones. Clearly, the OnePlus 9RT has some catching up to do here. But a phone's performance is more than its benchmark score. For what it's worth, the 11T Pro was caught capping the Snapdragon 888's peak performance when an intensive app or game is running to prevent the phone from overheating. OnePlus was also doing something similar a while ago, and while this may annoy those who like to compare scores, it does have a fairly positive impact in the real world. For one, the Xiaomi 11T Pro hardly got warm even while running apps like Adobe Lightroom or Call of Duty Mobile. I suppose this was the phone throttling the CPU. The CPU throttling test running for 30 minutes throttled the CPU to 71% of its peak performance on the Xiaomi 11T Pro. However, the OnePlus 9RT on the same test only throttled to 90% of its peak performance. The Samsung Galaxy S21 FE? Well, by the end of 30 minutes, the Exynos 2100's performance had throttled to that of a mid-range chipset. So do you notice a pattern emerging? The Xiaomi 11T Pro is optimized to not get too hot while it's in your hand and you're watching a movie, even at the cost of higher performance. Frankly, you don't need that much power to stream movies on Netflix, but the OnePlus 9RT meant for the brand's gaming audience takes no chance, even at the cost of excessive heating. The Galaxy S21 FE seems just as powerful as the S21 Ultra on paper, but despite the same hardware, it tends to throttle a lot. So there will be flashes of high performance like when loading a game or during the fancy One UI 3.0 animations, but performance while gaming or while editing a photo will be lesser than the 11T Pro and the OnePlus 9RT. I tried the two most popular multiplayer games on Android, BGMI and Call of Duty Mobile on the three phones. The OnePlus 9RT and the 11T Pro can run BGMI at UHD graphics with Ultra FPS, while the Galaxy S21 FE can go up to HDR plus Extreme. However, all three phones can run COD Mobile on very high plus max, the highest it can go at present. However, the gameplay is best enjoyed on the OnePlus 9RT. The phone's 600Hz touch sampling rate really comes into play here, and it now has haptic support for in-game actions like shooting, taking damage, and the like, making the experience all the more immersive. Not that the 11T Pro is way worse, it also ran both games without a stutter, and thankfully none of the three phones heated up too much during my time of gaming. 
people didn't play long enough or delhi winter is probably making things a little too chilly around me but has the snapdragon 888 finally been reined in by these larger heat sinks and vc cooling systems let's leave that for another day here comes the fun part the xiaomi 11t pro on paper with its 108 mp camera 8k video recording a 5 megapixel tele macro lens should win this camera comparison right right But what if I tell you the 50 megapixel Sony IMX 766 on the OnePlus 9 RT is just as good, if not better? Then there's a 12 megapixel camera on the S21 FE that's remarkably neutral but so full of detail. This one was a tough test to judge. The primary cameras on all the three phones are pretty awesome, and the choice will come down to your personal preference. The Samsung Galaxy S21 FE's color science is extremely neutral, lacking that extra saturation and contrast that makes photos insta-worthy. That's never an issue with the 11T Pro and the OnePlus 9RT. Both reproduce colors to their vibrant best, especially bright primary colors like yellow and red, and photos shot from these two will hardly need any editing before upload. Having said that, it's a 50MP camera on the OnePlus 9RT that produces the sharpest images with the best dynamic range. The 12 megapixel ultra wide camera on the Galaxy S21 FE is the best of the three. It has a wider field of view than the others and is also the most consistent across multiple scenarios. All three ultra wide cameras require ample light for a good photo, but the 11T Pro's 8MP ultra wide camera has low details around the edges. The 9RT is not bad at taking ultra wide shots, but I would prefer Samsung's output for its neutral tone and adequate details. The Galaxy S21 FE is also the only one among the three with an actual telephoto lens with 3x optical zoom. Both OnePlus and Xiaomi rely on their large size primary sensor to crop out a 2x digital zoom. Quite naturally, the S21 FE's zoom lens has the best performance. The optical output has a high signal to noise ratio and doesn't change the color science from the primary camera maintaining consistency. Can't say the same about OnePlus and Xiaomi. The former gets the details and sharpness right. but tends to increase the wide balance temperature giving a warm tinge to the shot. The 11T Pro puts an extra dollop of saturation to the subject it's zooming into, creating a big rift in color science from the primary camera. Looks good, but lacks the consistency one would expect. As for HDR performance, the OnePlus 9RT is the most aggressive. It automatically performs multi-frame processing to improve details in shadows without blowing out the highlights like the bright sky. The 11T Pro also does the same to some extent, also not as aggressively as the 9RT. But the S21 FE doesn't push the dynamic range as much to capture both a blue sky and all the details in the shadows. With a 5 megapixel tele macro lens, the 11T Pro is one of the few smartphones to take macro photos seriously. It's not at all a gimmick on the 11T Pro and you can take some yummy macro shots by going real close to the subjects. and you'll get a creamy bokeh in the background in return. The OnePlus 9RT also has a macro lens, but it's nowhere as useful as Xiaomi's, while Samsung lacks any close-up mode whatsoever. Instead, you can use the 3x optical zoom to capture close-ups with a decent amount of detail. When it comes to low-light shots, the Galaxy S21 FE seems to be doing the best job out of the three. Both actually bring out the frame quite nicely, but the 11T Pro tends to blow out the light in the photos. while the 9RT feels a little too dark. The S21 FE is the most balanced of the three, but also takes the most time to shoot in night mode. The OnePlus 9RT is quickest in that regard. Now all three phones can capture human subjects quite nicely, but once again I like the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE's output the best. The OnePlus 9RT and the Xiaomi 11T Pro tends to over sharpen the details in the faces, while the S21 FE looks the most natural with the color tone in line with what I was seeing from the pre. So far in every section it always seemed like any one of the three could be the winner. But when it comes to the charging speed, there was no doubt that the 11T Pro would take the cake away. But here's the catch. It won't always charge in 17 minutes as claimed by Xiaomi. To get that speed, you need to have airplane mode on, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and location disabled, no recent apps and ambient temperature around 25 degrees. However, even after following all that steps but charging in an ambient temperature of 16 degrees because well, Delhi winter, the phone took a good 22 minutes to fully charge. In fact, the OnePlus 9RT with 65 watts fast charging took just 8 minutes more to reach 100%. 
both phones did 0 to 15 percent at the same time but the 11 t pro was at 50 percent in just under 10 minutes at this rate it doesn't really matter which is the fastest because both phones charge much much faster than the average smartphone like the samsung galaxy s21 fe the world has moved on to charging speeds upwards of 50 watts but samsung still likes to address 25 watt as fast charging the phone took around 90 minutes to top up the battery but this one has wireless charging up to 15 watts which isn't present in any of its rivals but frankly how many of you really want wireless charging on your phones let me know in the comments as for the battery life the 4500 mAh battery on the OnePlus 9 RT lasts a little longer than the 5000 mAh battery on the 11T Pro. It outlasted the larger battery of the 11T Pro by a few minutes in our charging test that's now live on the MySmartPrice Hindi channel. Go check it out if you haven't. The 11T Pro isn't all that bad, but the 9RT's battery saver mode can run a marathon. I've never seen a phone stay on at 1% charge longer than the 9RT. Both phones delivered upwards of 6 hours of screen on time in our intensive battery test, which is definitely a good sign. The Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, even though it has a smaller display and roughly the same battery size as the OnePlus 9RT, died a whole one hour before the 9RT. This once again proves that the Snapdragon 888 is a far more power efficient SoC than the Exynos 2100. Now looking at all the factors, there seems to be an audience for each of these three smartphones. The OnePlus 9RT is the fastest of the three and delivers longer sustained performance. It also has the longest battery life and charges almost as fast as the 11T Pro. Photos from the 50MP primary camera come out lush and saturated with a lot of details and excellent dynamic range, but the low light images need a little more light. Its weakest link, however, is the display, where not much has changed from its predecessor. The Xiaomi 11T Pro lives up to its name of being a theater in your pocket. It impresses immensely in the display and audio, basically the multimedia experience, but it does throttle a lot in sustained loads and hence is not ideal for gaming. It also has a fantastic primary camera where the shots come out with rich details and saturated colors and probably the only reliable macro lens on a smartphone. The 120W fast charging fails to charge the phone in the advertised 17 minutes, but is still the fastest in its segment. As for the S21 FE, it's the perfect size for me. Nice and compact and has the necessary durability certifications like IP68 rating and even wireless charging. But it fails to impress where it needs to, that is, the performance. The Exynos 2100 throttles a lot under heavy loads and the screen is too small to enjoy any kind of gaming. But the camera on the S21 FE acts as a nice foil to the other two in this comparison. It produces the most neutral colors with a decent amount of details and is the most consistent of the three. Sadly, it takes too long to charge and the battery dies out faster than the other two. So which one should you go for? For its long charging times, poor battery life and relatively lesser performance, I would completely eliminate the Samsung Galaxy S21 5G out of the three. What remains is the OnePlus 9 RT and the Xiaomi 11T Pro. Now being a heavy gamer and a performance freak in general, my choice is the OnePlus 9 RT. I quite like that very slim design and especially the metal frame body but but if you happen to not play as much games and instead choose to spend all your time watching movies and tv shows on your phone get the xiaomi 11t pro eyes closed so that's it for this video let me know what you thought of these three smartphones in the comments below and for more videos like this stay tuned to my smart price